Hello everyone and welcome to Ukulele on the Ground's Thursday live lesson. We are live. My name is Aldrin Guerrero and joining me today is Mr. Aaron, the voice now from Mercy. What's up, Aaron? What's up? And we have Kahai, the legend for again. Say what's up, Kahai? What's up? So how this works is that we take any and all of your questions and we get them answered right here by all three of us. We're going to collectively take our brains together and brainstorm and come up with the best ever answer that we could ever provide for you, right? Behind his permission, right, today? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Right? If we choose to accept it. <laughs> we, should, we should choose to accept it. Uh, we're going to give you the best answer that we can come up with. And um, that's, yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. You guys can ask us any questions. We are live, so there's a chat. And you guys can take advantage of that chat. Uh, ask your questions there, and uh, we'll, you know, we'll get to them as soon as we, um, you know, uh, as soon as we can, I guess. Uh, we, we have questions that came in throughout the week. And um, we'll get to those first, and then we'll answer any and all of your questions on the uh, on the chat. And also, if you um, if you guys are watching, thank you so much for subscribing to UU Plus. This is a uh, you know this is a video. If you guys are watching via UU Plus, but thank you so much for all of you folks who are, who also downloaded this on iTunes for our Thursday Live Lesson podcast. So without further ado, let's go. <clears throat> uh, this isn't really a question, but I got what? like a message. Um, this past week, okay. and this person, they have a, a uke, okay. and then they bought a pickup for it, and then they took it to a luthier. Mm -hmm. And when they took it to a luthier, the luthier wouldn't install it for them. They said like, oh no, I hmm. can't really do that, and maybe you want to consider this other pickup to install, to use. And like, so the, the, the pickup that she had mm -hmm. was the um, LR Bags 5.0. Okay. And the pickup that the luthier suggested was the K and K, like K and K. No. Yeah. Which what, what, Yeah, transducer. Passive. Okay. Um. Well, from what I know, the difference between the two is uh, <clears throat> the regular, uh, the regular transducer. You can just you know use you can just, like pretty much um, stick anywhere under here and it'll pick up like any you know any vibrations from your uh, from your ukulele. But the five O. Um, I ran into that same thing because I, I installed a 5.0 in one of my ukuleles uh, back then and asked Joe Souza who does all my um, all my pickup work and uh, and he said that it is different it's going to be a different um, like setup I think you got to drill like an extra hole or something like in order to get that rope you know like kind of take um because uh, you got to no, pull well, that rope in or any, something. yeah any um <laughs> under saddle right you have to do yeah that. but then like because I already had like an under saddle one in there and uh, you had to drill like another an hole so that it goes one? through so oh. instead of just going, you know, going up and then like laying, because it just a uh, normal pickup would just kind of go up and then lay on the, uh, you know, yeah, on the underneath, underneath your, your, saddle. your saddle. Oh, saddle. But that one had to like had to go through for some reason. Had to go like yeah. up and then back in or something. Yeah, I don't. That's that's what he told me. Hmm. You know, so I was like, okay, I well, to look into that. Yeah, yeah there's uh, he had to he had to drill two holes from what I remember, and um, <clears throat> so that's probably what the uh, what the Luther was talking about. Maybe um, it was like kind of a different setup and maybe they thought it was a little bit too intrusive for the ukulele that you might have had did they specify which uke it was uh kolo huh? so i said okay like, yeah it might have been a little too thin because kolos are no you know known to not have too much bracing yeah. you know and um and That's it is thin I but i do know that during you know with, with kolo huh, like um right underneath their uh their bridge there is a plate there like a, there should, yeah a there should be a, plate. a bridge yeah. plate so i mean most most ukuleles have that right, right? it should have been it should be okay so me. i'm not you know i'm not quite sure what the reasoning would be because you can definitely i mean regardless if you know if, if it is you know if i'm correct with the with the extra hole and whatever um you should still be able to install that maybe just this specific luthier just has more experience doing the uh, the transducer yeah, instead of you know one. Uh, instead yeah. of I actually I'm not too one. sure which because like K and K makes a, a bunch yeah a bunch of of that's why I was like oh which which one, one? So like, oh well, I think sure. but I think the ukuleles I think they're all transducers and the only difference between mm -hmm. the different models is like you can get one transducer or you can get two oh I see mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I I don't really think they have like an under saddle or anything like that mm -hmm. it's I just see, yeah. but. Yeah, and, and I like I. It's just yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. just easier to install. Yeah, that yeah, than it's it probably is what it is. Yeah. So install. that's what it's starting to sound like. It's starting to sound like um he he's just more comfortable with doing um the yeah. K and K, Cause which it, makes it, sense. He should. I mean, it's not like he it, said you can't. He said he could should take it to another loop there. Yeah, you, yeah, or, yeah. Take it to somebody else. If, yeah, and that's what they're looking into, and they just were asking like why maybe it might have been that, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and yeah. 
like yeah. uh because like you know, for uh, any under saddle right. you do have to do some work to the bridge right, right, right. and to the top of your ukulele like it's mm. gonna you have to drill a hole through the bridge and top of your ukulele to mm -hmm. string it up right like, and then yeah. sand down your saddle a little bit right, right. Yeah. yeah 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 so like yeah. that i mean that's way more work and that that can affect your ukulele way more than just if you had to tape something mm -hmm. to the inside of it right yeah yeah. And then you do have to install like the was it the jack the quarter inch jack on the side yeah yeah but on the, on the bottom but like that's that's a pretty common like installation right like more so yeah, than yeah. like uh, maybe an under saddle right yeah. actually we do have a uk minutes where Joe from Kanilea mm -hmm. is installing a pickup five zero or the um, it's not it's not a five zero it's mm. the that my Maisai. Side. oh okay okay. That is that's a that's a K and K transducer. No, 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 but no. um, just for people who are interested in in what it, out, what's like, involved in mm, mm, um installing like an under saddle pickup, mm, we mm. have a full um few minutes of Joe himself kind of installing one into a Kanilea, mm. and you can see the the whole process that he goes through. It was it was a great um. It was minute. a great it was a yeah. great uke minute. But you know what? Now you know what was funny about that is um I remember Joe talking to me about it and saying that like. He actually had a bunch of um, uh, not backlash, but a lot of complaints about oh, yeah. that video about people saying, "Hey, I followed your whatever your tutorial uh, to uh, to install a you know to install a pickup and it, it didn't work for mine." Oh, and, really? uh, and, and Uncle Joe was like, "Well, you know, if is this your first time doing it? Maybe your your drill bits were in this, you know, were whatever, and then like or the same size or uh -huh. something." And he was he was kind of saying that like it's not like a tutorial. He was just kind of yeah, yeah. like um it's like, like showcasing this, like, this is, is how I this how is we the do process, it here yeah, that at, we we do yeah at uh, at ukulele underground or at um, at Kanile ukulele. You know, like that's this is this is what we do. This is how we do it. And you know, it was exactly like how he did it. Right, that was yeah. my youth that he was installing the thing in, and um. Yeah, he said he got a lot of complaints saying that, like, I tried it and it broke my uke. And it's like, don't try it. Like, that's, yeah, it's you know, like, I'm a trained to professional to, yeah, uh, to do just it. To showcase so. how, how it's uh -huh. done, what's involved with yeah. it. Um, and, and really, that um, they can't really say that because he, he used like a custom jig that he created. That's himself, true, too. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You know, so, yeah. So it's the not, stick and what he had. A... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he had like a whole process. Mm. Um, little little things that he does to make yeah. it easier for himself. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty neat. Uh, I, like I really like that episode. Yeah, that was a good one. That was a good but, one. Um, <laughs> I think. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I, yeah. I remember him saying like, when that, that thing came out. <laughs> yeah. There's there's been like other youth minutes where it's kind of like you guys make stuff or do stuff, mm -hmm. and those are like, oh, try it yourself, do it yourself. Yeah. yeah. But the point of that episode really was like, uh, get a professional. Yeah, that's why to... I didn't do the uh, yeah. the installation. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we, you know, get and I, that's probably like Uke Minutes like over 100, I'm guessing. It's you know? uh, Uke Minutes number 69. Okay, it's pretty far. It's pretty far in. So in the yeah. 69 episodes, we did not do installing a pickup on Uke Minutes. Yeah. And, that's, and the reason why <laughs> was because we wanted somebody, somebody else to do, to do it. it. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. What I, what I was going to ask or what I was going to kind of bring up is like, so this person, they had a uke mm -hmm. and they liked it and then they bought a pickup for it. Mm -hmm. But do you think if somebody's getting into like using pickups and using, you know, like doing like elec more electronic stuff, is that the smartest way to go about it? Because like the 5.0 is... Hundred fifty dollars. Like when I looked it up, it's, mm. that's usually the price from well, all the retailers. I mean, you know, if if we're talking, this person has a koloha, so like this person, I'm I'm guessing can afford like a hundred fifty dollar pickup. Well, like, like I was gonna. That's what I was gonna say. Is that, like <laughs> this is my assumptions. Do you think <laughs> to just get into like playing with a pickup? Right. Do you think it's smart to do that? Like take a ukulele that you know and be like. I like how this sounds acoustically and I yeah. want to add I'd a pickup to it. it or is it maybe, you know, you could because you can get it's not going to be a great ukulele, but you can mm. get ukuleles with pickups mm. for one hundred fifty dollars, too. That's true. That's true. And then that might I mean, like, that's what I was thinking. Like, mm. that might be a better starting off point because yeah. just getting used to, to playing with a pickup in an app, mm -hmm. maybe. But, you know, I mean, we, we can't 
we can't rule out the fact that like how they feel about that specific ukulele like maybe they want to amplify that you yeah you know? that's like, yeah. that's just yeah, they, they it, like it the feel they like the sound it all kind of yeah. depends right? on and it, and it also depends on your level of like woodworker mm-hmm. skills Skill. <laughs> yeah because like some people are confident yeah. like yeah i can i can totally do that Right. You know, with the tools that I have at home, mm-hmm. I've done work on other things mm-hmm. similar before, <laughs> and so like that's that's not a big big problem because I I installed. Yeah, I was my, just gonna say I remember you into you my did in the Zager, right? The, the Zager um, that you had. No, I I installed the the pickup into my Taylor now. The Taylor, I thought it was a Zager. Oh, nice. Yeah, is and, that um, you bought something from Nam, right? And then you installed it over there. Uh, I bought the LR LR bags. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Actually, I did. I did mm. install that into the that other one, that Zager guitar too. Mm. Okay. So See, that's done, the difference between you and me. Like, I've I, done. I would that. never. <laughs> like I'm not that confident. But the thing is that like um I I'd been like modifying my guitars mm. and stuff since mm. I was in high school, and I started mm. off with like hundred dollar guitars. You know? <laughs> yeah, okay. So like so, okay yeah so. Since then, I've <laughs> I've kind of like you know gotten. I mean, I still don't have really expensive guitars, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. like I I'm. You know, at the point where, like, you know, if something, if I mess up something, I know kind of how to fix it or replace mm-hmm. it, so it's not that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. But for a lot of people, you know, if they don't have any experience, it's like safer to just go with a, a professional or somebody yeah. who knows what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. And, so it's and... kind of your tolerance for risk. <laughs> like, <you know? laughs> well, and I was like thinking, like Joe. Yeah, I would like I would go with Joe because like that's part of what Joe does. Like, yeah. right, like. Every single day, he probably installs mm-hmm. at least one pickup or mm-hmm. does something yeah. like that. Yeah, and he builds ukuleles too. Yeah. So, so he e- knows... even if he totally breaks one, he knows how to rebuild yeah. it. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, like and for this person, like mm-hmm. I don't know how easy it would be to mm-hmm. find like that a good luthier to do yeah. that for you, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think even for me, like if you know, I had a choice of like taking a acoustic instrument that I really liked. Mm-hmm. putting a pickup in it or like just buying like a new instrument like and it, it's you know something that i'm just trying out i think i would buy a new instrument because like uh, there's always that chance that you might do something to your your instrument right yeah, yeah. when yeah. you during the, the one that you really love yeah. Yeah. yeah well she thought you know she thought she was going to a professional to you know to a luthier to get it installed but yeah that luthier didn't feel That's... too comfortable you know like it wasn't like she was the one who was installing it i guess mm-hmm. right so yeah. she thought that like okay well if i have i have a really good kolo ukulele you know like i'm gonna buy the best possible pickup that you know that i can i can buy and she thought I mean, or she believed not me, not thought she believed that it was this that this five oh. I'm sure there's a lot of, you know, um, people and reviews out there that she read and stuff. It's like, okay, this is the one that I'm gonna get. And she goes to this luthier, and the luthier's like, nope, I'm not gonna touch it. It's like, what? <laughs> that's yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's all all always hard too, because yeah. like people come in and they they say like, oh, there's like a local guitar luthier, and it's mm-hmm. kind of like. Mm. like oh me they might be able yeah. to help you but ukulele <laughs> is like a different thing yeah. and it, and it, it takes... is it's a smaller instrument too yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like you're a carpenter fix my daughter's dollhouse yeah exactly <laughs> it's like it takes a specific <laughs> yeah like people who build ukuleles or who yeah. can fix ukuleles yeah they have a very specific expertise in that yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so yeah. and maybe is... maybe some some would be better than others so it yeah, I guess, yeah, true. Just, yeah. Just shop around and mm-hmm. try so, to find somebody that you, you would feel confident. Did they say what with. area they're from? Uh, no, like they didn't really. Mm-hmm. Eat. Yeah, I think they're from Europe and like oh, a I more see, isolated see, see. part of Europe yeah. too, kind of. So it's like I mean, there's there's only like a handful of European shops like that, you know, specialized in uke that can do stuff like that. Yeah. One of them being like uh the southern uke store i know i have they're pretty close to southern uke store in like in the, in the uk mm-hmm. they're really good at doing you know doing pickups and installations and whatnot um if they're in the czech republic they can go see uh ben anderson and he does like stuff with with ukes and works on ukes but other than that i don't Cause, really know too much because <laughs> even on... Catino, the ukulele in italy because <laughs> even on Kauai. Like you would think mm. that I mean we we have like easier yeah. access to some yeah yeah because they're more familiar with youths pro- and stuff yeah. professional luthiers but like we've actually heard of like 
it's like people bringing their mm. their instruments to so called luthiers, right? Oh, yeah. And then it's like, ooh, <laughs> like that is not how you do. Yeah, yeah. I can fix that. That and then that's yeah, yeah, it's hard. It's this. hard to to really gauge mm-hmm. how much somebody really knows. Because yeah. <laughs> they're on the on the flip side. I mean, it. it it's kind of good that the guy said that I don't want to do this. Yeah, that's yeah. true. It's he better than just taking yeah, it and then it was like, it. oh yeah, I can make a quick buck by installing this, but I don't know how to yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah, you know? that's true. So at least he, he was honest yeah. and was like, you know, hmm. I, I don't, I don't really want to do this one. Um, yeah. I would recommend this instead because I have more yeah, experience. Yeah. So if you want me to this. put this, yeah. I can put this. Yeah. yeah so that that's I, I think that's yeah. actually a better thing that it that it happened. So do you think? Say it wasn't like a five zero. Do, do you think the um, uh, how you would install that transducer would be the same as say putting on like a Fishman one or something? Or um, I'm or not too sure. It's kind of like the, just those still. like stick on pads, right? Yeah, it's like but a, you you would no. still okay. Well, if it's a stick on pad, think, then you don't have to drill. No, no, no I think then, you right? still yeah. do have to drill one oh, like are, are, through, are, yeah, 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 but underneath here, like it's not going through the underside. Yeah, it wouldn't go yeah, through your mm, yeah. Okay, so that's yeah. why they I think they're recommending oh. that instead mm. of the five volt, right? Because yeah, the yeah. five volt you definitely have to drill in yeah. one. Now you have to route it underneath that. You have to route underneath the saddle. You have to do multiple drill drilling. Yeah. Okay. Location. That makes so. sense. Yeah, good thing they were honest. <laughs> Instead yeah. of just like, oh, uh, yeah, I guess so. And it puts a transducer. It's like, here's your five <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, here's your youth with your five yeah. And it That's sounds like great. The, the equivalent of oh. like the shady like you know car salesman. <laughs> exactly. And they take your five and yeah. resell it. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. what if? <laughs> or like the the shady um computer hospital <laughs> yeah. guys or whatever. <laughs> oh. I mean, I, a, a computer hospital, not a, the computer. No, 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 hospital. no yeah. Not, yeah, 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 yeah. About, yeah. I was like, oh, hope they don't listen to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. We're not calling out. Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> not like we brought computers there to did get fixed or anything. <laughs> I think, I I think like, and if you you're looking for somebody to do work on your instrument, like maybe the best way is to just like. Like, if you go into a tattoo parlor, right, mm. you ask, like, oh, can I see your, your previous work? Can I see, mm-hmm. like, you know, pictures mm-hmm. or yeah. something else? Yeah. Like, see if, like, oh, do you have other, do you have instruments that I can mm. see that you worked on? Or can is there any other experience that I can see, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it's, yeah, we, 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 we definitely have, like, people on Kauai who, like, they're like, oh, I'm great at fixing instruments <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> And I'm like, uh, I, like <laughs> I'm inches of glue like sticking out. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, like, yeah. My dad could have done that. Yeah. <laughs> or, or like my my dad took uh, ukulele and it was like his friend who was like, oh yeah, I can fix it. Mm-hmm. He's like, okay, cool, mm-hmm. and give it to his friend. And he came back and he, my dad was like, he's like, oh, my friend was nice <laughs> about it, but like when it came back, it was like too over braced uh-huh. uh-huh. and it wouldn't resonate anymore oh. uh, and it's like mm-hmm. it was such a good sounding ukulele and then now yeah. it's like my dad's like <sighs> makes me it's sad to even whatever. play it because like yeah. i remember or maybe it sounded good because it was broken yeah like, you know sometimes that actually the, yeah the, that's, that's the, the thing. case yeah. well like my uh, dad yeah my dad said like i kind of wish i just left yeah, it just at that broken. point yeah uh-huh. yeah yeah sometimes yeah. like when you fix it it's not it's not the same not sometimes most of the time when you fix it, it's not the same. Yeah, we is actually it... have a an Ohana in here. Oh, it's broken and it sounds great. And it sounds great, <laughs> yeah. Because I guess um a, a while a while back, Ohana sent us a bunch of ukuleles to to give away, mm-hmm. and one of them arrived and there was like a crack in the top, and so we just kept it because That's we couldn't office, couldn't cool. give it away. Yeah. But it's like it sounds fantastic. It does. <laughs> I think it resonates and it's super loud. And, and it's probably super because loud, you, yeah, you yeah, know, it's broken. Yeah, or or at least it was built, you know, mm. like just below the tolerance mm. level. You know, like it was thin. The top was thin, <laughs> and it just just below the tolerance level, and so it broke. But mm. because it was so thin, it's like, ah. you know, you probably it's probably. I thought like, because it was like it was broken, maybe like we could get into this like distressed instruments uh, now. Because I think yeah. Fender does that right with their electric guitars and stuff, where like they like they scruff it up, make it look like it was yeah, war, yeah. Uh, road I worn. Mean, they call it I road think, worn. I think that's more of a visual. It's an aesthetic thing. Yeah, yeah. because solid body instruments don't. Oh, yeah, I guess it's so. not affect. The sound isn't affected mm-hmm. as much, mm-hmm. you know. I like I know when they I think when they try to do recreations of like mm-hmm. mo- uh, artist models mm-hmm. right they make it look like 
how the artist model is currently. Oh, so I guess so. Yeah. yeah. Scratch. Yeah. I thought it was good. It was something moment. like like the. And like you know, like uh, Willie Nelson's guitar is it? got that hole in it, and now uh-huh. you know, I see how he plays. I'm like, ain't no way Willie's the one who did like who, <laughs> who did that damage. I'm not calling him out or anything. I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, like there's so it, yeah, somehow there's yeah. Some, something happening that guitar, and it sounds better because it's you know, it's got that extra hole or whatever. Like yeah, up, something you about know, it. Some people say that it's like one of the best sounding guitars they've ever heard. It's probably really? because of that, you know. Um, so maybe there's I a think, market for that. Maybe we should take like Ukes and just distress them, and sell well, it that way. I Nobody think, take that idea. Nobody, <laughs> Nobody steal like, that idea. Purposefully. <laughs> it looks like somebody, yeah, like right. Oh, the, are you looking it up? Yeah. Willie Nelson's guitar. Its yeah. name is Trigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's like there's a so hole in it, and I'm like, N20. I, I was Nine like, nine. I was looking at him strum. I'm like, ain't no way Willie did that. <laughs> I don't know. That's, I mean, it kind of does look like the way that he holds. I know, but like, what kind of you know, what kind of pick are you using? Like, what are what are you what are you doing? I don't know. We we, we can get into like uh, from here. We can transition into like the nerdy side of it, right? Like in Beck, they have like the guitar, oh, isn't Lucille. Lucille, right, with bullet holes in it, and that's supposedly a great sounding guitar. <laughs> it makes it makes was, it sound better. I was gonna say though, um, I think Tommy Emmanuel, right? Like he plays like the same guitar. Yeah all these years and that's uh, just and that's all bus right yeah, yeah. Like, or like at least you can look at like mm-hmm. around the sound hole where he strums mm-hmm. and picks and it's mm-hmm. just like Ooh, really yeah, that's and... worn down and yeah it, there, there's something to be said about instruments that have had like or have been used right yeah, and yeah. have or have that age kind of to yeah. it yeah so i'm not saying okay maybe i shouldn't say he he didn't do that but i'm i'm suspecting he might not have done that <laughs> It might not have been that. I suspect. Yeah, it, but, it looks like it, yeah. it was in some kind of accident. <laughs> yeah, I don't want somebody like to email me saying like, oh, I'll drink. Okay. I've been a big fan of Willie Nelson for a long time. Yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> I know exactly what happened. I was there when it broke. <laughs> like, oh, sorry. Um, next question. <laughs> yeah. Next question. Uh, Devin asks, what's the best way to smoothly transition from F to B flat during... Uh, during the pinky mute and tropical wine day oh okay so that's a great question so um pinky mute wise you know you use your pinky of course these three fingers are what you're going to be using for your f and for your um for your b flat so from your f right here let's just take out the pinky you know all, all together this is for now let's just take a look at these three fingers so from your f chord point of finger all i'm doing is i'm laying it down like this for the b flat so it's going from this kind of rainbow arch position thing to the E string first fret to uh, to laying it down so that it you know plays on the E and A strings on the first fret. So my middle finger then goes down here for the C string second fret. So it's just going down one string. So um, think of it this way: like your middle and pointer finger are just both going down, like so. So you can see that transition from F to the B flat is going down. And then ring finger, um, you know, just goes right up to the G string third fret. So from the from the F here to the B flat, not much movement. It's just my ring finger. But uh, when I play the F, I already have my ring finger kind of close by anyway to make the transitions even more smooth. So from the F, so if I'm doing the uh, the pinky mute with it, And it's even easier with the pinky mute because I can use the pinky to kind of um, uh, guide myself or to, you know, I'm going to anchor it maybe a little bit. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to use that to kind of bounce off so that I can uh, I can play my, my B flat chord. See what I'm doing from the F? I'm going to pinky mute it. I lift it up here and transitioned off to that B flat. Go back to that pinky mute. I lift up my fingers. Sorry, that F chord. Yeah, sorry for that. There's... Someone's life is in danger. <laughs> I know, I know you guys understand, right? Mm-hmm. So from the F chord, um, pinky mutes, you know, lifting it up a little bit to make that you know that transition even easier, so that you have contact with your you know with your fretboard. So if I'm uh, if I'm lifting this up, you know, using my thumb in the back and my pinky there, it should be enough to kind of keep my ukulele in place. So from the F, you know, it's not just like I'm lifting up I'm lifting up on the F to make that you know to make that chord. Um, you know, so this pinky finger is going to keep it stable. And, uh, so if, if, if you're one of those people that like to lift up on their chords 
and then you know and then do the change but uh, like I mentioned in the beginning you can just use your pointer finger to anchor and that just goes down to the E and the A and make that B flat chord from there and you can kind of like have the neck of your ukulele just like resting on your palm yeah, right on your palm Dude. so so it, it doesn't drop or anything mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah when you do it yeah and then um what if your what if your yes. thumb is up for your f oh up here yeah yeah um so, my my thumb just kind of does this and my uh this part of my palm just goes closer to the uh, yeah but to, i mean to the for, back the for me i usually have my thumb up for the f mm -hmm. and then behind and then for the b flat so mm. that's kind yeah, of like that a, too. a switch yeah. that you would have to make so here's what aaron's talking about so from so, right, I got it. There we go. So from here, if you know if your thumb is over, then he's talking about moving it back here to get that B flat. So from the F to the B flat. Um, but from what I was doing earlier, you can just do it from the F to the B flat without you know kind of without doing too much switches with your thumb, because um, it then becomes you know my my thumb is still pushing it forward. And then the pointer finger, uh, because that becomes my anchor, that makes it stable. See, like how I'm not lifting up on the pointer, and it makes it even easier with the with the pinky because uh, I, I have a little bit of give. You know, I can give that pointer finger a little bit of a break. So, uh, Tropical Hawaiian Day is a great um, great exercise for uh, for the pinky muse because it goes from the F then to the B flat, and then to the C seven, which is you know your pointer finger pretty much stays in this fret and in this position so it doesn't move around too much it's a great way to practice that pinky music you can kind of do this and you can seesaw you know like between the chords so bop, 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 yeah bop, bop, but you're bop, bop, the thing is with the pinky mute you're not mm. pressing down no no, so no, no you gotta kind of like yeah figure out what that pressure the ide ideal pressure is yeah so even though i'm, I'm putting my my pinky finger down and using that to support, you still don't hear anything. It's still muted. So that's, you know, pinky mutes, right? Yeah. yeah. And then and then with the with the B flat, you don't really need the pinky mute too much. Too right? much. No. You're no, just no, because releasing the pressure. You can just um you know you can just use left hand mutes. You know, instead of yeah. pinky mute yeah. with the uh, uh, with the B flat chord, since you're holding all four strings anyway. Well, I was gonna say like I think yeah for that kind of song like I would just use left hand mutes for most of it, mm -hmm. and even or even F and then C C seven um, is gonna be a little tricky. Well, I, I wouldn't use instead of using pinky mutes, I would just use like my middle and ring finger. No, that's true. Just put it too. over like this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but like uh, Devin said that the problem that's or what's giving him problems mm. is laying down doing that first lay down from the F to the mm. you know I think that that yeah it's it's a roll you know with the uh, with the pointer finger I'm you know I'm keeping it pretty much around the same position it moves a little bit but not too much so my pointer finger is here you can kind of see it from this angle a little bit more not like this uh, there it is so from here to here you see how it didn't really change too much let's go in there and um i've played this chord enough that it kind of lost you see where like my the rest of my fingers are it's just the top here is what's what's changing so it's it's kind of locking in place so this kind of like when you play your e chord you know that like uh this knuckle kind of just locks in place same thing with my pointer finger it just kind of locks there on the e and a strings when i do the b flat so from the f to that one more down there you go f to that you can kind of see it so point of point of finger lays down middle finger goes down ring finger goes up and now uh, like i said so here's the uh, the transition so you can do f then go to the pinky mute see how i'm lifting it up and getting it ready for the b flat b flat from this angle yep boom to that and back to the B flat. Yeah. I think yeah. uh, part of the thing that like people have such a hard time with B flat is like they try not to 
hit the uh, C string with their pointer finger, right? Mm-hmm. Like they try and really like get it so it's only hitting E and A. E and A. But like with B flat, at least when you're starting off, that's that's a good thing to kind of practice. You know, good to be like precise. But I think you can bar it if you want to bar it. Yeah, and it, or I, I think if you're if it's if just the chord itself is kind of giving you trouble. Like, just try and get it first, right? Like, yeah. And even if you're... And the good thing about B, that B-flat is that if you are, like, kind of hitting that C string, you know, on that first fret, mm-hmm. it shouldn't matter <clears throat> because you're holding down the second fret of that same string, the C, mm-hmm. with your middle. So, like... That's even true. If it's yeah, like, even if it touches. Yeah, yeah, or if it would normally kind of <clears throat> make, like, a... Like, mute the string or make some kind of mm-hmm. extra noise. It shouldn't really be that yeah, because bad because the middle is there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I would, I would say it might might help to stabilize with the bottom with your with the palm. Yeah, yeah. just mm. just kind of keep it there, and then you can move your fingers, and it it's yeah. you know your your neck stays in one location. So yeah, this. so your his um the it's... neck of of the ukulele is resting on Aldrin's palm. Mm. And then that way it doesn't drop or it doesn't go forward or backwards. It just it's you're, it's all you're doing is moving your fingers. And then you can kind of like position it in a in a location where you you can still use your pinky to do the pinky mutes. It's just you know, mm. just some some place comfortable. Yeah. I barely. I mean, I do that every now and then and stuff, but I try to refrain from doing doing that because uh, I mean, <clears throat> for me, I move a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if I rest it and stuff, I can't really move it too oh, much. But yeah. if you're doing, but if you're doing chords and stuff, yeah, it, that is yeah. a great. That's great. I advice, do it yeah. almost every time I switch yeah, from yeah. F to that's B great, flat. That's great advice. Yeah. But um, and also like me going to like the, to the picking parts because I gotta go like this. Yeah. Maybe, like let go and yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah. But yes, yeah, strumming wise, if you're having a hard time, that's that's great to just keep it stable. So if you want to stay in one place, that's a good advice. I think, um, but like when we see like beginners who are playing, that's like something that they don't. I feel like they don't utilize mm. enough. Yeah, like their support. Pump. Yeah, or or like because it's. I I feel like even if you you don't actively like have it resting on your palm all the time, mm. it's pretty rare for like not some part of your palm to be engaging that the mm. uh, the neck right like. Whether it be like transitioning or yeah. like, yeah, at, at least yeah. It, I feel like there's always like, in any song, there's always like a point where your palm is gonna touch the neck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Just and that like, can be like, yeah. like you know how you talked about having two points of contact. Right. Most most of the times when you're switching chords, any mm-hmm. chord. Yeah, so that's supported. Yeah, so your your palm can always be one point of contact, especially for those harder changes. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, and and that's where like I, I feel like um. Uh, beginners like will say like oh my fingers hurt and stuff it's because mm. like they have like a big opening it's like a tunnel between yeah, their palm and, and then the... the fingers doing all the work instead of you know like yeah and yeah, when yeah. when dispersing it it'll well when help. you mm-hmm. when you hold it like that too like when you hold it where it's like your thumb is right in the back in the middle of the yeah, neck it's gonna cause some like it, cramping you're doing like more it, it is more of that squeezing kind of yeah, thing with your fingers like this you're yeah. using more of your fingers <laughs> yeah instead of your yeah like, and we talked about it relaxed you know, yeah um here a lot on songs made easy about like how it should be um kind of like you know, like closing your palm you know like this yeah, just like, like a natural, natural yeah natural you know natural grip it's not supposed to you know you're not doing this some crazy whatever claw thing you know it's just a natural like you know open and closing of the you know the it's, palm Cause like it is like when people say like oh I have like or it, it mm-hmm. hurts my hand, you can see like the physical like resistance yeah. when they're trying to make those chords or like they're holding it too you know like they're pressing down like super hard or you know yeah and a lot of times they they say too like <clears throat> oh maybe my hand's not big enough or mm-hmm. I have too big mm-hmm. of hands and stuff mm-hmm. and it's like mm, it's not really that probably yeah. it's just you know it's all about like the angles and mm-hmm. your positions really mm-hmm. it's not about like your hand size mm-hmm. i'd say yeah <laughs> remember there was that one like that one korean video with like all those kids like playing guitars and stuff and they're like the guitar is like bigger than them uh-huh. and they like play yeah so that's yeah. creepy but like it's, a cre- <laughs> it's, it's a like a video. North, north korean but, yeah it's a creepy video yeah. but like yeah. you know every time someone's like oh my fingers are too small they like, oh yeah watch this video <laughs> 
<laughs> Devin, Devin said a little whiskey before the session always helps <laughs> and it's like and that's yeah, kind of liquid it. courage is as, what it is as yeah. long as you're relaxed, relaxed and kind of like loose mm-hmm. it, it everything kind of goes because because mm-hmm. that's the thing is um a lot of people struggle with overthinking things yeah so yeah if you if you just do yeah kind of just let it go and and if it if it if you land the chord good if you don't that's okay hey you know yeah. or so. uh like we when mike first came on right mm-hmm. he said like if you make a mistake make it twice yeah, like do it again yeah make it make it intentional like don't the worst you can do is make a mistake and then just stop and be like mm-hmm. oh no oh no did it, everybody hear that <laughs> yeah then it's like obvious that it's like oh yeah, yeah. that's mm-hmm. so bit... yeah especially for chord switching i mean the more <clears throat> that you do it the, the more you'll get used to mm-hmm. and you'll figure out things that work and things that don't work we i with and you said songs made easy yeah like that's what we've been trying to like drill in right with songs made easy is like do as much as you can and even if you can't like necessarily strum the chord like mm. just try and make it at least make the yeah. shape or like if you can't make the shape of the chord like that's too hard then do mm-hmm. you know mute Kinda the mute, it and... mute the strings and then strum it because you're always gonna you're either getting the rhythm or you're getting like the chord shape yeah you know i always try to i feel like anytime you, you're practicing mm-hmm. try to make it where you're you're doing something right mm-hmm. don't don't make it or it's it's kind of like it's it's the worst you can do is just say it's too hard i can't yeah, do anything yeah. like mm-hmm. if you just give up from the beginning you're not going to get anywhere mm-hmm. if you just try and even if it's bad you're gonna move forward at least mm-hmm. a little bit mm-hmm. so okay next question um let me find it <laughs> okay uh joel said i have a question about pull-offs mm-hmm. i'm not sure how much <clears throat> sound i'm supposed to be getting um from the example like uh it's 102 week three exercises mm-hmm. the three two uh zero pull off seems hard for me to get that much sound i see i see so i guess getting getting uh like doing kind of like multiple pull offs with one stroke right oh. is kind of like yeah. yeah okay so um the, the best the best way that i've heard it being explained is you definitely should if because you're a U plus member, you definitely should check out Chris Salvador's um, you know, like to uh, his tutorials, his his master class. Because the way that he explained it with that snap sound, because there's gonna be a snap. So you hear that snap, even you know, if I don't play it. You can kind of hear that snap. So what it is is you know, you're uh, you're you're playing that that note and you just kind of really trying to snap it off you're pulling it you know you're pulling at it so it's not like you're taking your you know your finger and then uh, and then lifting it's not a lift at all it's it's a pull down yeah so so what uh, what you're doing um <clears throat> when what how i suggest you practice is point a finger one fret behind and then middle finger in front so you just Because that's where it's going to be hard. Because you're pulling off, and be- and uh, because the resistance is right behind it, there's not a lot of you know, there's not um, a lot of give. As if you were to do it on the third fret, for example, there's all this give back here. But if your pointer finger is right behind it, it is going to be a little bit tougher. So you're going to have to pull a little bit harder and make sure that pointer finger doesn't uh, doesn't go with it. And then from there, you do the same uh, pull off with a pointer finger. So if you were to practice it in, in three parts, do uh, middle finger first, then pointer finger, then do middle to pointer, and then pointer out. Because even without like playing it, that A, It's almost, you should hear, yeah. almost like you're plucking the string <laughs> with your left hand. Yeah, with your left hand. Imagine, yeah, imagine that. If you're plucking it with that pointer finger on the left hand, like if you were picking with uh, with that left hand. Yeah, just in that position. Finger. That's why when you do tapping, it's the same. You know, it's, you're just mirroring 
mirroring what you're doing with the left hand. Because that's exactly what you're doing. Instead, instead of uh, plucking down your thumb, you're plucking down your pointer finger instead. In, um, in this, you know, in this direction, like how you would with this pointer finger on the left hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're kind of, so mm -hmm. how, how hard are you pressing down on the string and then how hard are you pulling sideways? I'm not pressing too hard, but I am pressing harder than I would if I were just to play a chord. Okay. So it is just a little a, bit harder. Like a little bit harder. Yeah, a little bit harder than that. And the pull is, is quite hard. Okay, like yeah. pulling side or yeah. down towards your feet. But like kind of once you get that sweet spot of where it's supposed to be, mm -hmm. um, it's less it, effort. It's, it's less yeah. effort. But but it is there is a resistance, and I am pulling harder than I would to you know just play the chord or just land on that note. Uh -huh. yeah. So if I were just to do, there's definitely a lot more um, more pressure doing the pull off than there is just. Um, fretting the string mm -hmm. like uh that um the pull off technique it's always like uh or it's kind of when you do like the op to the open string mm -hmm. it can be like a little bit louder because it is like you're doing like a second yeah like, strike second hit but um usually it's a diminishing like it the volume and the sustain will diminish with each time that you do it right mm -hmm. like it's not gonna hold as long as like if you just held this the string normally and then like hit the note. It's mm -hmm. it's gonna like get less and less. So that's kind of one of those techniques where it is kind of like if your strings are dead or mm -hmm. your ukulele doesn't have a lot of sustain. Yeah, I can see where you might have problems with like, oh my pull offs don't sound as good and stuff, and it's mm -hmm. just like, uh, it might be that. It's in this case, mm -hmm. it's usually not, but in this case, it might be that your ukulele is giving you a little bit harder of a time to do these things. So, just something to keep in mind. Yeah. If, if you feel like you're doing everything correct and you just can't have it like sound as loud or last mm -hmm. as long, then you might want to try new strings or try a different ukulele. Because it something. might sound too dead. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. Just well, like popping. dead strings itself, like yeah. dead strings itself will kind of like stop ringing yeah, right after you pop. strum it so mm. yeah. but that's um yeah check out chris salvador's master class he talks mm -hmm. about it he talks about the snap in it so if you're you know if you're putting your right hand over you can kind of still hear the snap so what you're doing is you're pulling hard enough so that it snaps yeah kind of has a yeah a sound to it yeah yeah uh, Devin also said that um, Craig Chi's masterclass, Bridging the Gap, mm -hmm. has some pretty good exercises for pull-off and hammer-ons. Okay, yeah. So Craig, I haven't seen Craig's pull-off one, but that sounds good. Craig is a, you know, notable teacher, so I, <laughs> why wouldn't it be good, I guess? <laughs> and, and both of those are on yeah. UU+. Plus, UU+, Plus, so. yep. Man, I, I recently watched it again. That's why uh, Chris is why. That's all like I, I remember. Yeah. Because I'm like he did this one where like it looked weird. Like what what was it? And he, he did this like this one where like a pulse. Uh huh. Where like he you know he just takes it from like relaxed to like um to like pushing out almost. Yeah. yeah. So I've always you know like thought of it as like this you know uh -huh. like, where it's just open, no, like it's regular open like a... and then close. But I watched it again, and it's like open, and then even more open, uh, and then like close, and then even more close. Uh, so I was like, "Oh, gotcha!" Yeah. And that's why. <laughs> yeah, his that was so good. That master a, class is so great, good. Yeah, he's, he's a great so teacher. talented. That guy, <laughs> so so good, so good. I think uh, <laughs> like uh, Craig's master class, a lot of people like it because it's like if they're like a beginner, it gets mm -hmm. them. It, it that's the reason why. It's yeah, bridging, bridging the, the gap, gap. Right. It mm -hmm. gets them like a little bit farther mm -hmm. in that. But then, like, we recommend, or, like, uh, even Bruce's classes are really good for yeah. beginners. Mm -hmm. But I think the ones that we were, like, super impressed with was, like, uh, was Chris's master class, right? Yeah. Because, like, he's so tedious in, like, yeah, he had his PDFs and stuff. exercises. Like, right? It's crazy. Yeah. He... Yeah. And, and, like, explaining, like, why, what you're hoping to mm. get from each exercise or yeah. what your, the end goal is supposed yeah. to be. Well, he's he's been teaching ukulele for years over at uh, Ukulele Hale, which is um, mm -hmm. uh, Jody Kamisato's ukulele school. So if you guys are ever on Oahu and stuff, um, you know, uh, Roy Sukuma school is not the only school in town. So definitely 
try out Joe. Not saying that, that you know, I don't want people to think they're like, oh, you know what you know, Dream said about <laughs> no, no. Roy, Roy like, Sikuma is they're great. They're really famous. Yeah, they're, really, they're, they're great. They're really famous, but um, that's not the only game in town. So there's people like, you know, um, like Jody's Kamisato School, Kalele Hale, which has gems of a teacher like uh, like how Chris Salvador was over there. Yeah. And I know they have other great ones like Gina's, uh, you know, really good. And I think she still teaches there. And um, yeah, they're, they're all awesome over there. So. It, we, did did Honoka and Azita go to Jody yeah, school? Yeah, yeah. Ah, they're 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 Jody like you know they're People's. Jody bred and <laughs> <laughs> you know they just he there's a farm there somewhere <laughs> like yeah. Ukulele whatever, Holly has a farm. Whatever so he's did, doing, he's so doing did um well. what's what's her name? Uh, we collaborated with her. Um, like Carly. Oh, Carly, Carly also Carly came did? from uh, Ukulele Hale. Ah. And that's like she solos and stuff. Like yeah, when we yeah, did, she's um, good. She, so she, they're, she's comfortable. Yeah, they're creating totally. a farm of uh, of elite it, musicians right? over there. Exactly. The and, next uh, generation. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, uh, I've judged a few um, ukulele contests up in Oahu and stuff. And like Jody's school comes like as a like an army. And mm-hmm. there's, I remember like at least ten <laughs> entries were like Jody students, and it was crazy. Uh-huh. And that's actually where Honoka and Azita got their fame from, is that they won like the Duke's Ukes contest, mm-hmm. and from there on, like they kind of blew up to be this like amazing, incredible <laughs> yeah. female duo. They have viral videos yeah, on man. YouTube, and <laughs> yeah. So we gotta yeah. do, we gotta play body surfing, and maybe we can get like millions of views. <laughs> I think you have to yeah. play body surfing, and you have to be like, I have um, to also be a fifteen-year-old yeah. girl. Yeah. <laughs> and it'll, it'll help. That's it. It'll help. And it'll help if you're if you're two fifteen-year-old girls. Yeah. Too. Yeah. No, but that's the thing. It's like I guess for fifteen, like they're you know they're really good. Like I, wish I was like that when I was I, fifteen. I think so. And then I think people too, like they didn't really mm-hmm. see i mean besides like taimane right yeah, yeah, yeah they didn't see somebody who like was like that like yeah. a younger female yeah mm-hmm. like really ripping on oh it. man you imagine if like taimane was like 15 now and then you know she had the same drive as like as she did back then because you know like taimane at 15 i think she was playing at like at waikiki and stuff already. <laughs> she was doing all that yeah i think yeah. At, like 10 she was like playing at waikiki so i just that jody was telling me that honoka and azita yeah, were they were doing that on their own too? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. And I, see, I love that. I love people I, that kind of drive. I think it was because mm. they heard about time on his story. Yeah, like, oh, they can do it. Yeah, no, she can she, do it. We can do it. She, yeah. yeah. Well, like that's so, yeah, that's awesome. That that's the thing is like kids look up to like Honoka and Azito or like mm-hmm. younger kids, right? Yeah. But it's like yeah, Taiwan was doing it. It's just like you didn't see nobody had cameras to record <laughs> like, oh look uh, at yeah, this amazing no youtube when she was doing it <laughs> it's, but... yeah. it's crazy though because uh like i i would always just watch her like on youtube and stuff i've never like been to uh her oh we're talking about taimani garner um prior to touring with her in thailand mm-hmm. i've only watched her videos and she has this presence this aura very like almost like almost smug like Ara, you know what I mean? Like, I, no, I'm just I, yeah. she's a friend of mine. I can say that. Like very, <laughs> so very yeah. like, you know, and she says it. She like, commands the stage. Yeah, she commands yeah. the stage. She hams it up, you know, like, and that's what that's exactly what you know what she does. But then like off stage is a completely different person. It's amazing. Uh-huh. Like she uh-huh. has that persona. Like in wrestling, that's like her. You know, if yeah, this yeah. wrestling, that would be her gimmick. You know, like Hulk Hogan's not actually that way. Yeah, <laughs> it's, you know? yeah. he's actually a nice guy. <laughs> yeah, like, Brutus the Beefcake plays doesn't actually cut hair. Like, it's, you know? <laughs> yeah. We, well, we we did a podcast with her like yeah. uh, a while ago, and it is like you can see that where she's yeah. super nice, super down to earth. Yeah, yeah, and then she kind of talked about that too, right? Like where it she does like like kind of like putting on a, a show. show, like a yeah. bigger. It's not just yeah. like. Oh, I'm gonna play ukulele for you guys. It's like <laughs> I wanna make you guys like feel something or she, think about something. And she was talking about like a like a Halloween like show thing that they were doing. You know, when when uh, when we did that podcast, mm-hmm. but she does that still like often. Not that same show, but she does like different shows like pretty often. Like where it's full production with yeah. costumes and whatnot. It's amazing. And she recently did Staples Center, which is crazy for an ukulele. Uh, crazy Staples so cool. Center. So cool. So proud. So yeah. proud. <laughs> It's my friend. It's my friend. Close personal friends. I don't know her friend. Taiwan. Taiwan's a friend. Yeah. <laughs> Taiwan is actually one of those. Sometimes we we take some liberties with the, our friends. Yeah. It's my friend. <laughs> oh, you know you know my friend Steve. Yeah. 
And Honoka Nazis. I'm dropping all these names. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know them. Yeah, they're, they're my friends too. <laughs> <laughs> now, they're really sweet. Um, we toured Czech Republic together. They're really, really good kids. And, um, and Jody, an amazing like manager and stuff. He really like keeps these girls in line and stuff and just really cool. And they, you would think that there's like an ego thing because one's older and whatever, you know, like whatever. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of cool because they got like this big sister, like little sister kind of relationship and like they help each other out and like Azita the younger one looks up to like Honoka and mm-hmm. Honoka knows that she looks up to her so like she's just like a good example mm-hmm. so they're really good kids you you watch them perform mm-hmm. and it's like oh these kids like no they're like professional yeah. performers right yeah but it's kind of it's fun to hang out with them because like mm-hmm. afterwards when they step off of stage <laughs> they're like kids they're kids it's, it's, they're kids it's it's yeah. so much fun it's like mm-hmm. local Hawaii kids and yeah. just like oh yeah you're you're you know yeah exactly like the kids that if it's like go to a family barbecue or family party yeah. and then it's yeah. just like kids yeah. running around <laughs> and they just so happen to be like really good at ukulele yeah yeah okay. uh next question i don't know how we got off tangent there but <laughs> so, so to show my friends real quick <laughs> yeah I, I i forgot we got we had a message from alan okay. um and he submitted videos to like the what is it called um, oh, the tech, tech checks. Yeah, in the forum. Mm. And I was gonna tell you, but I forgot. Oh, yeah, sorry, we're, yeah. we're running like a little. So, yeah, late. sorry, Alan. I didn't. I didn't get to uh, see it. But I thought maybe we could. I don't know if you could give tips on this. He said, like, uh, uh, let me see. Right. Should we uh, do a um, a cliffhanger for like for for next week's episode? Because uh, I didn't, I didn't see the video. <laughs> yeah, uh, or well, I, like the just from this, I feel mm. like I did pretty well, but I'm looking, I was looking to improve. So yeah. please provide feedback if you have any advice advice on things I should work on, uh, particularly how to perform better, like how to not have such a grumpy expression <laughs> on my face. <laughs> and, and I was like, that's pretty funny, but I don't know. Do you have a? Do you have? I any know. Tips you gotta. On? I mean, you gotta have the. The time on a garter, like you gotta have that, like that. You gotta have a confidence Sa- in Sasha yourself. Fierce. Yeah, <laughs> Sasha Fierce. Like, you gotta have that confidence in yourself, knowing that you are entertaining. Like, you need to, you know, you need to uh, convince yourself that you are entertaining. Don't don't be like, you know, don't be shy. Because if you're shy about it, it'll show on stage. So if you don't want to seem like you're a girl up on stage, it's probably because you're feeling grumpy about being on stage. It'll show, and everyone can see it and stuff. Um, but. Uh, we've said this multiple times and over and over again like the audience wants you to do good so with you know with that already in mind um when you're going up on stage thinking like okay the audience wants to see a good show they want to be entertained and they're not there you know with their tomatoes in hand ready to throw at you and stuff like they're they're there to be entertained so if you go up on stage with that you know with that thought you'll be like okay here i am i'm about to entertain these people that's that's what they want i want to give it to them i'm going to be the best version of myself you know like to uh you know to to entertain these maybe even better maybe for yeah, these turn next five person, minutes yeah. exactly maybe for the next five minutes of my life i'll you know like i'll be even better than i am just for these you know just for these people so and and it really is because um being on stage it's like a it's like a high like i always tell people that you know like it's it's kind of like a high i've I've never, you know, done like laughing gas like some people like, you know, like do a little whatever at like at the dentist and whatever they said like mm-hmm. they feel. I, I'm, you know, I'm guessing that's kind of like kind of like that where like you just say things like whatever that comes out of your, you know, comes out of your mind is what I do like on stage, and I feel super like relaxed and super um, in tune with the, uh, you know, with with myself. So I, I think that's one thing to think zone. about. Yeah, it's I get like in the a, zone exactly. Like just a, being on stage, knowing that like people are there supporting you because that's. That's what everybody really wants, right? Like, it's just to get everyone's support. So knowing that you're going on stage, it's not like you're a comic, right? Because comics, you know, like stand-up comedians, um, sometimes the audience can be like, oh, this is this guy going to suck. Yeah, hecklers and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But with, especially with ukulele and the ukulele community, it's always welcoming. It's always warm. It's always a nice, you know. Unless maybe you go to like a like an open mic with all guitars and like <laughs> you know you go up with your ukulele they're like oh here we go here's the ukulele player you know but for the most part people want you to do good and even those guys you know they want you to do good they don't want to hear another like ukulele act or whatever they well, want you know it it was like uh the videos that he had are from the Denver Uke Fest okay 
and yeah, it, like yeah, he, he played, he played, and then mm-hmm. they like people clapped, and you could hear people were getting into it. Yeah, so. so that's I mean even more so if it's from the Denver Youth Fest, and so that's I've I've played in front of that audience, and you know mm-hmm. they. They're crazy. Those guys, like, they want to have fun. Those guys are super fun, you know? And uh, and that's that's the kind of, you know, like, energy that you should be feeding off of. So just, I guess my best advice would be to feed off of the audience and just know that they want you to do good and that you're going to be okay, regardless if you make mistakes or not and stuff. They're there to have fun. They're not there to uh, think about the mistakes that you made, but, like, the fun that you're providing for them. Yeah. yeah. I, also, also, one thing, too, is, like, um, if you can kind of just imagine like if it, if you're playing a song that somebody mm. else wrote if it's yeah. not like an original song yeah. try to step channel. into yeah, yeah channel that person try to yeah. try to i uh, if it, if there are lyrics to it or if mm. there's like a story behind the song mm. try to imagine like what the writer was feeling in order to produce mm. that so mm-hmm. and then and kind of channel that through your hands and right. through your body mm. language and yeah. everything like that and and that mm. would be be more entertaining on stage than anything that you could you know like yeah even if you did if you played it perfectly but without that you know it's mm. you know that it's going to be better with it so that was uh that was an advice from john cruz that i got like because uh-huh. uh, he comes yeah. all the time to the Kauai music fest and uh, and john cruz and i asked him I'm like man you got like the the most soul you know out of your voice of anyone i know like if anyone's ever heard of john that you know uh, heard john cruz play especially live, live on stage and yeah. stuff he's got such a soulful voice and i'm like man I don't, how do you get so much soul out of your voice and he told me that like you know i just i just try to imagine that every song is about my life you know like so mm-hmm. if this song talks you know if it's a blues song that talks about like all this trouble and whatever losing this and being sad about that i pretend like i you know i lost you're that the, or i'm sad about this that, exactly yeah. so that like when you sing and it's it's not soul it's just real raw emotions that like this is how you feel Mm -hmm. you know if you were in that situation so it's it's it was powerful advice Mm. like i think i i can understand where or i don't i'm not sure um because like i i'm not really like a performer like i don't really like performing i i think i'm like one of those weird people who like I like learning things like mm. learning music and learning. I learned <laughs> magic. <laughs> yeah, it's like knowledge. You're not thirsty really, for knowledge. Not really to perform. Just. Yeah, it's just, I I just sit in my room and I'm like, <laughs> oh, isn't this cool that I can make this coin disappear? <laughs> <laughs> it's like all for myself. But yeah. like, so like when I'm put into those situations where people, you know, people say like, oh, can you play this song for my wedding, Kai? Or can yeah. you? Uh, people people say like, mm. oh, do a trick, Kai. Show us a trick. I get that too where it's like mm. I start getting anxiety and then afterwards like I come off and I just feel like my stomach is all tense and I'm like <laughs> oh I don't feel yeah. good and I think the way for me to relax though is like I yeah so I, I don't feel good with people watching me I don't feel good with performing but what I do like is I like playing music I like mm-hmm you know doing the trick itself Mm -hmm. so if i can focus on that like Mm -hmm. if i'm playing music i just think like i'm just playing playing music you know Mm -hmm. this is yeah this isn't if you're in front of people you focus more on like yeah would feel just in your room yeah yeah and my enjoyment out of that right like how much that Mm -hmm. i love like what i get out of playing music for myself and Mm -hmm. just focus on that and it's kind of like i don't know it's it's like just ignore everyone and just like think that you're you know yeah and and like you know it it could be like a bad thing where it's like somebody might say like oh do this and i'm not paying attention and it's like (laughs) i'm i'm just focusing on (laughs) can i just do this first (laughs) yeah Yeah. i do this but but i feel like that's how i Mm. relax i get more into Mm. it and that's how i enjoy it like Mm. i don't i and i think like there's other musicians and other people you can see where Mm. Like they're grooving or they're doing stuff and they're just having fun playing music, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. It really isn't like the crowd is nice. I, I I like when people are like, Woo, you did such a good job. <laughs> it's it's a nice feeling, but right. for me it really is just like, Oh yeah. I, I just getting back to the roots of like mm-hmm. I really love music. I really love whatever mm-hmm. and that's what I'm doing. It's good. Yeah, just just putting yourself on in, in a in a mindset, yeah, to mm-hmm. to perform. Um yeah, yeah those are, I was just ta- I was advice. just talking with somebody and kind of explaining the the dynamics of because like I, I 
I was saying that because we play music every Wednesday right. for like a small bar or mm-hmm. a small restaurant, and I don't really get nervous in front of them anymore. Yeah. You know, because he's done it so much. Because we because we do it every week. Mm-hmm. But um, the bigger the audience, yeah. like the more of a rush it is. Yeah, it you know? is. It is. Like the when you start getting to like you know bigger venues, mm-hmm. it's kind of like it it kind of takes on like a different feeling or mm. energy right there's like a transaction that happens yeah. between the musician and the audience that just like mm. if you you can feel that it's like mm. it's not like anything else i, I yeah i think it, it it's it's a different it's a different animal and the feeling of of playing for like even just like a hundred people you mm-hmm. know or like 200 mm-hmm. people and stuff it it really is surreal like and the energy that you you know that you feel from like uh, from playing for that much people mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. rush like you said the rush that you get like oh man I get to entertain these people yeah, so you know like yeah. you gotta think positive or like I get to entertain these people it's like it's not like oh no I have to entertain these people it's like, yeah. no I get to yeah. entertain these people and like and they want to be entertained like I was saying and uh, but honestly I like I like I get more of a rush on smaller venues because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you're, like, you're more comfortable yeah right? and I yeah. feel that like I can hear what the audience is saying versus mm-hmm. like when when it's like a big audience. I, it, it just you know becomes a sea of whispers, you know, almost and like. But when I can hear people, I can like I can call them out. <laughs> like I don't know, that's what I <laughs> yeah. do. I hear yeah. like last night well, some because uh, it was Wednesday night last day, and someone's like, "Oh, this is this is gonna be a good one." Like somebody uh, we said like, "Oh, we're gonna play Europa next." This is by uh, by Carlos Santana. We're gonna play Europa, and then like this lady turns to like her friend, like, "Oh, don't go to the bathroom, <laughs> like, <laughs> not this one, because this is gonna this is a great song. This is the one you don't want to go to the bathroom for." And mm-hmm. and like you know, I, I'm on stage. I'm like, yeah. Maybe you should have used the bathroom before the show. Yeah, before the show. And, uh, you know, it's for me, like, I get more of a rush, like, because I, I look for little pockets like that where, like, I can interact with the audience, like, you know, I per- on a personal level. Yeah, I think for, for me, it, it when I get put into those situations, it's like a quantity thing more than, like, or a quality thing more mm-hmm. than a quanti- mm-hmm. quantity thing. Uh-huh. And for magic, it's like the connection that I make with people. Mm-hmm. So, like, there's there's actually tricks where you do a trick for one person only. Everybody yeah. else in the room knows how the trick is done yeah. just because they're like farther away, right? Mm. And but like seeing that one person like be mystified <laughs> is like s- such a good feeling. Mm. And then like it kind of helps too. Like everybody else knows the trick and they're like laughing along, right? Like they're like, oh, it's obvious how he does this or uh, whatever. But this person just doesn't see. But I think it, yeah, for me it, it is that like one-on-one connection that you make and when you do make it and like everything goes good it's like oh my gosh that was such a that was such a good performance right or that was such a good night or yeah. whatever it's just like oh, it's, everything worked out it's like all the stars align <laughs> my favorite like tricking one person thing is um and it's not like a magic trick or mm-hmm. whatever it's like more just like a like a practical joke yeah is the have you seen that video or like there's three guys and two of them are like they have like wooden spoons in their mouth and yeah. then like one person would like kind of bow their head and then the mm-hmm. other person would like take the spoon and like try to hit him in the back of the head mm-hmm. and then they would take turns doing that so then the, the first guy he would like he would hit it and it's like okay whatever and then um the second guy would put his head down but the third guy would like whack him as hard as he can <laughs> <laughs> like in the, in the head uh-huh. and it's like oh man that was so sore he's like i don't know i'm how, just how doing things like, yeah. it's like that? how did you do it it's like i'm just doing this maybe use your use your neck <laughs> it's like a it's a um it's like a new zealand uh like commercial it's like use your neck mate it's nick. use your nick it's all about the nick it's like this <laughs> he's like what and do it again <laughs> uh, do it again <laughs> there's uh, you gotta see it. i gotta send you the video it's great uh, <laughs> There's there's a um, magic or meh, kind of the same realm a <laughs> trick where you you challenge somebody right mm-hmm. and like the bigger the person is the bigger yeah. like the mu- more muscular the person yeah. is you ha- try and have them put their arms all the way out and yeah. put them underneath your arms mm-hmm. and have them lift you that way right okay and because it's like this if with your arms extended and with them trying to lift you underneath your armpits yeah like it's pretty much impossible okay. like nobody can do that. Mm-hmm. And then what you do is you go up to them and you do that to them too. Yeah. But you stick your arm out a little bit farther and you yeah. have somebody else go underneath <laughs> from the back and like lift it up from the back. Oh that's my great. gosh. And then oh, they're, that's great. Yeah. And if it's a big dude, their eyes get huge. They're like, <laughs> what are you doing? Right? It's like, oh yeah. yeah and oh. that is just a trick for <laughs> one person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. 
if if you guys are ukulele on the ground plus subscribers and you read this there will be links to, uh, to these videos <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> anyway going yeah, getting anyway. back to that yeah, back to ukulele it's kind of yeah it, getting back to that idea that you get to play for people yeah. it's it kind of is i mean you've cultivated this skill and not everybody gets that opportunity to, mm, you to know, showcase, connect yeah. with that many people all at mm. once. You know, using that skill. Yeah, in your everyday life, you're talking with maybe, you know, two to five people mm. at most. But really, like, mm. if you're a performer in any to kind reach of out sense, to like, like yeah, a mass amount of people. To be able to connect with mm. multiple people at all at time. once with the same, you know, yeah, words or same you know, strumming that, that you did. Mm. It's like, it's something that not mm. everybody gets to do. Mm. And so, yeah, and just kind of really, like, yeah, enjoy it or be able to take in that moment because it yeah. doesn't happen all the time and it doesn't happen to every person. That's so. mm. that's like a good mindset, right? Just to be like thankful that you're in this situation because mm -hmm. like we, we have seen like yeah. musicians who might be like a little bit more, you know, seasoned or like who've been doing it for kind of long. And it seems like for them, like, uh, not to say that they aren't thankful to be working as a professional musician, but you can see where it's like, ooh, it's another day at the office. I gotta go in, <laughs> gotta, gotta put in my hour, or gotta put in my set, and then yeah. clock out. Yeah, if you're not having fun, like, oh, then you're you know, doing something wrong. Do something, you could do something else. <laughs> yeah, do something else. I think performing can be like, it. Mm -hmm. it's work, and it, you can use, you know, get yourself hyped up, but it should be like where you're gonna enjoy it, you know, hopefully like, going with that mindset of like i'm just gonna have fun i'm gonna yeah you know all right so with that said that concludes thursday live lessons here if you guys ever want to send us any kind of questions here is how you send it to us <laughs> well like on uh, on the video on the video on the oh yeah on the video sorry right there yeah. so for those of you listening on the podcast email is questions with an s don't forget the s questions at ukuleleunderground.com or you could also post questions and videos to the uu plus forum or click that green and white button on the bottom right hand corner um any of those will work we get those emails and we try to answer them here on thursday live lesson so uh for those of you folks who are listening to this via podcast check out ukulele underground ground and sign up for uu plus to watch the video version of this and you know and while you're you know while you're there at uu plus you might as well take your ukulele playing to the next level because that's what uu plus does it takes your uke playing to the next level i can't uh, i can't even you know begin to describe how many people have you know have have done just that i've seen many transformations over the years of uh, of people just getting better and learning music not just ukulele but learning music and how to appreciate music and how to create music all right so for those of you folks listening make sure to check out uu plus and for those of you folks who are uu plus members who are already watching this if you want to take this along in your car or uh you know on the go if you're go on the treadmill or something you want to listen to some ukulele discussion or perhaps some magic discussion like how we just did <laughs> uh you can totally download this on itunes on the uh, ukulele on the ground podcast thursday live lesson this is aldrin guerrero on behalf of Kahai and Aaron, stay tuned for uh, Ukulele on the Ground songs made easy and also stay tuned to one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching. <laughs> <laughs> Here at Ukulele on the Ground Plus is Aldrin Guerrero. Aloha!